Thanks so much for joining us for this midweek meditation. I'm Pat Smith of Knox Presbyterian Church in Naperville, Illinois. We're looking in a short fashion at a larger uh, message that we'll be bringing this coming uh, weekend. We invite you to tune in and be a part of that, either live stream 9 o'clock on Sunday or anytime on our YouTube channel after that. It'll give more information. But for now, we're going to read our text in Acts chapter 8 and see what's up. Let's hear this portion of God's Word. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Kandake, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk alongside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? And so, beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north at the town of Azotus, He preached the good news there and at every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. Every time we read from this book, God intends for us to gain understanding by the Spirit, understanding of mind and heart and life, and I pray that's true for each of us. Well, this is an astoundingly cool passage of Scripture. It starts with the character of Philip. His backstory will take too long to tell today. We'll get to that this weekend. But he is definitely one of Jesus' followers at this time. And at this time, one of the things that I think is most noteworthy in this text is the amount of action that comes prompted by God. So if you have a chance to look at the text yourself, and I encourage you to do that, look for these things. There's in verse 26, an angel of the Lord speaks to Philip. Down in verse 29, the Holy Spirit says to Philip, and Philip responds in both cases to do exactly what he's prompted to do. And then the promptings come in the conversation with this eunuch from Ethiopia. But then by the time we get down into verse 36, there is out of this conversation, this specific request, having talked about Jesus from the scriptures, their scriptures of the our Old Testament. And finally, there is then in verse 39, they come up out of the water and the spirit of the Lord snatches Philip away, whatever in the world that means. So this is a passage all about action, all about prompting, all about openness to God on Philip's behalf, and also the eunuch, as it turns out, so that both of them, are in the right place at the right time for the right conversation that leads to the magnificent evidence of the saving love of God. Isn't that a cool account? And it's no less cool in our day. God is busy prompting us in all kinds of ways. And we pray that we will each be attuned and attentive to all that God asks of us, however that might come, written in scripture, through the counsel of friends, thought that comes to mind that we test out and sense this from God, it can come to us in so many different ways, this sense of God's prompting. 
but it's up to us to be attentive and then responsive every time to enter fully into the wondrous adventure of the good news of Jesus. Let's pray. God, I'm so grateful that this text is before us today, not only for the encouragement to be attentive to you and to then live according to what you prompt, but also to the celebration that it is truly good news that Jesus is alive again and lives forever, inviting us to walk right in step with him. Help us, O oh God, to be attentive and responsive to all that you set before us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.